Today's review is about a tough sew, and these are really small walking foot sewing machines. I'm not doing affiliate marketing here. I don't make any money from tough sew. Tough sew didn't ask me to do this review. I'm just kind of talking about these machines in general. And these machines go back a long ways. This is their website. They have a, def a couple different options for accessories for their machines. They make a walking foot, a couple different sizes of walking foots. Plus they also make a zigzag machine. And that's really unique because I don't know any other zigzag walking foot machines other than these types of machines. They come in different harp sizes, seven, nine, and nine with a monster wheel. So they can vary in price anywhere from, you know, like 400 bucks up to almost 800 bucks. Very basic walking foot sewing machine. These are not really industrial machines. They're kind of domestic plus is where I would put them. I have one of these. It's one of the first machines I ever bought and I bought it down in Vallejo and from the dealer and I have it in my shop. And for the purpose of this review, I'm actually going to make a bag with this today. And it has a little small speed reducer on the side and it has a huge monster wheel that slows it down. On the back, it just has a small domestic motor. You can see the bar where they engages the walking foot. Underneath, this is a class 15 machine. And what that means is it takes a class 15 bobbin, class 15 bobbin case. And it has, um, and that's really important because those are really easy to buy. You can be able to buy those any place on Amazon. It's not a unique bobbin case or bobbin at all. It also has a shuttle hook. And that's also really important because it's easy to buy these and replace that as well. And also to, Disassemble it, clean it out, reassemble it. You don't have to worry about timing. The timing set on these machines. And so you can really service and maintain these machines really easily. On top, it's all metal throughout this machine. So you just have a metal bar. There's no timing belt that connects the upper shaft to the lower shaft. And it's just all metal. So that's kind of important when sewing with the leather. The Tough Sew is a smaller machine than an industrial sewing machine, and I'm going to show you in a minute. Here's a comparison to a 111W Singer, which is a full industrial sewing machine. It's a walking foot sewing machine. It has a larger harp. You can see the tension assembly up top is a bit different. And But, you know, this machine also takes 138 thread. So does the Tough Sew. It takes 138 thread as well. Big advantage. you got a Class 15 machine, takes 138 thread, smaller compact can go into a smaller shop. Maybe space is an issue for you. So this is the Miso Leather Now kind of test project you see on the YouTube a lot. Taking a bunch of straps of veg tan and sell them together to prove that it's can sew leather. It's a great thing, um, you know, it kind of shows the stitch length and uh, the, the stitch quality. It's really nice. Not very helpful though, in terms of understanding, you know, the capabilities machine. So for the purpose of this review, I'm actually making a bag. It's gonna be a vertical messenger bag, very simple. I'm gonna start working with the straps first. It's gonna have sewed down straps and just kind of beginning to building the bag. This is a complex project. I've got straps, I've got uh, buckle downs, I'm gonna use rivets. Um, I'm gonna push the machine to a limit really on how much leather it could sew. And actually while I was doing this project, a couple times it stopped sewing because hey, I've exceeded the limit, the power limit on this machine. And um, once that happens, you know, it's not gonna sew.
So while I'm finishing up the bag, let's talk about these machines. This began with the Thompson is the earliest, I think, version of this machine. And I don't know the whole history of who developed this machine, but it's really a portable walking foot sewing machine that really took off with sailboat owners, small shop people, hobbyists. This is what it looks like. It's green. It's very simple, but it really hasn't changed very much over the years. And, um, these machines come in all kinds of different sizes, not really sizes. There's a zigzag version of it. They come, I should say they're branded differently. You will see them online with different branding. Uh, you know, they'll come under different, uh, different names. Um, so don't get too hung up because you may not find a tough. So in your area, but you may find something else on the used market. So, you know, these, this is a portable zigzag machine. Um, if you just go out to Greg's list or Facebook marketplace, you'll see these machines come up every once in a while. Typically they're going to be a couple hundred bucks to maybe upwards of, of, uh, close to a thousand, depending upon what kind of machine it is, what type of accessories it has. Um, and you kind of have to develop an eye for looking for what you're uh, gonna find because it's kind of a boxy machine and a lot of sewing machines have kind of like the same format it was boxy but the the tough sew or the Thompson is very specific it's a walking foot machine and it's um, usually will be green or possibly red I've seen them blue various different colors here's one right here I could tell by the walking foot mechanism and this is a portable sewing machine. I'm pretty sure this is a tough sew. Yep. Here we go. Here you have a tough sew. So they're really good deal because I know that the sewing machine leather community can tend to be very focused on how to buy the most expensive machine and uh, that does the best because somehow, you know, somehow, some way, if I have a really expensive machine, I could make great work. Kind of doesn't work that way. You know, I think that there's a lot of hobbyists out there, people who are not necessarily selling leather goods, but just maybe want to make leather goods. Maybe you have some horses. Um, you want to make your own tack. Maybe you have a sailboat or you do also want to make some upholstery. And you're not really in the market for buying a really expensive uh, portable, you know, a really expensive machine. You're in the market to buy something a little bit more affordable. And it's not like, you know, you're going to be sewing leather forever. It's just for a project. So these can be a really good option. So when you go out to Amazon, here's a Conso. Same machine. It's got a handle on top. Again, portable. Exact same machine. Comes with a little kit. 450 through Amazon. Here's another, this looks like a zigzag machine. In fact, I can tell by the top uh, adjustments on it. It is a zigzag machine. Here's a Rex. Same machine, different name. The RX 607. But really, out reality is it's the exact same machine I have. They're all, I think, pretty much made in China, and you know they get labeled here um, by whoever's selling them. They might have a few different options. Here's a Yiquin. I think you get the point that, you know, these machines have probably been around since at least the 1960s, I believe. So that's going on, um, going on 60 years. They have a little speed reducer between the motor and the flywheel. And that's kind of critical because it kind of helps slow down the machine, makes it different than a domestic machine that's typically... The, uh, the, the motor and the flywheel connect with just a single belt. 
Here is a sale right. Sale right's a little bit different. Um, and I don't want to get totally into the details of how sale right is different, but it is a little bit upgraded machine. It's It's got different features on it. And so it tends to have, and that power pack B on the back here has definitely different features. It's a little bit more powerful power pack. It has a variable speed control. And that's actually an expensive unit right there. So that's how it's different. So let's quickly jump over to the website for Cellrite and look under accessories, I believe. That's where we want to go. Which will be, I think, under sewing machines. There we go. This is where you're going to find a lot of supporting parts for these machines, regardless of what you buy from who. It could be Tough Sew, it could be Rex, it could be Conso, I don't care. Because these parts are going to go with the same machine. And because Sailrite is selling basically the same machine, except the Sailrite chassis and the Sailrite machine is a little bit upgraded. It's got a lot of different options. But under accessories, you're going to find all these other things that you can buy, like the feed dogs. I changed out the feed dogs on my machine to this for leather. Sometimes I wonder if that was a great idea because sometimes the leather is slipping around now and I'm getting um, pretty much, sometimes I get an inconsistent stitch just because of that. I don't know. Uh, but the other feed dogs left marks because they've got, you know, jagged teeth on them. Here are the walking feet. Lots of different options for different projects. So there's a lot of support around this machine. It's got an ecosystem of various parts. And that's important because, you know, people have different projects. They have different needs. Maybe you started off with leather, but you've got a canvas project coming up or some other thing working on it. You don't just work with leather. You work with other types of materials. Here are tables. Frankly, though, for the smaller machines, you can put them into a domestic table that you could buy from Facebook Marketplace for maybe... 25 bucks or $50 at a garage sale. Who knows? Um, so you don't have to buy an industrial table. Here's the monster wheel change out. Other parts and accessories that are popular. So Sailrite is a whole, I mean, their company... Their whole line really revolves around this machine. They have a couple different styles of it. And again, this is not affiliate marketing. This is not a plug for sale, right? And uh, it's, I'm just really kind of showing you from the perspective of if you're working in leather craft and you're looking for something more affordable, here are where you find the options. Here's the Power Pack B. It's kind of expensive, it's pricey, but it's, you know, for a domestic portable machine this is the top of the line because you've got power plus you've got variable speed control and that's really unique they developed this and i think that they have patents around this they also sell a servo motor for underneath you may want to put it on a stand or a, a table and uh, hook it up to a servo motor which adds a lot more power to the overall system. They also sell a really unique belt. I'm not really sure this whole story about this belt, but it's extremely unique in the market. It looks like a non-slip belt. It's for the servo motor. It may be also adjustable. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it's kind of cool and differently unique. Now let's go back to making the bag and see how things are going. So the bag is finished, and this is what it looks like. It's kind of a complex project. 
And when I was sewing over this part of the bag, especially in the top strap, that's when it would stop sewing. Because again, I need more power and I'm not going to get that on a 1.5 amp domestic motor, which is what comes with the machine. Um, here's the sewing on the side gussets. Here's the straps underneath. Sometimes my tension was out of that great. It doesn't have really a complex tension assembly, so you kind of have to dial it in. And frankly, I haven't worked on this machine for quite some time, so there is something about sewing machines. The more time you spend on working on them, the better that you get. You just kind of can in tune with the machine. And frankly, this is the first major project I've done with the machine. I've done smaller projects, but there's this bag. And it's a pretty nice domestic little uh, bag that is a great project. So I'm going to wrap this up because I, I'm surpri surprised I'm already at 17 minutes. The Thompson is a really affordable option. It's, it's also portable. It will never be, uh, you know, a huge industrial sewing machine though that you get in a shop that can do massive projects. The big difference between industrial and domestic machines Industrial machines are made and designed to work eight hours a day, five days a week at least, 300, you know, 52 weeks a, a year. So the tolerances plus are also made and designed to go much, much faster. You know, if you look at the tolerances levels for a domestic machine, they're pretty low as far as uh, RPMs. If you look at industrial machines, they're going to be very, very high. So that's really the difference. But, you know, people... A lot of people end up buying too much machine, and I see that same ad over and over again, which is, hey, I bought this sewing machine. I don't have time for the projects anymore. I only used it for a couple projects, and I'm looking for 4000 bucks. It's like, wow, you know, maybe you should have shopped around and considered your, your needs. And that's why I kind of bring up this whole review. These are great options if you're not really um, looking for something that's going to be for a huge shop, that you're a hobbyist, you're just entering into Leathercraft, you're looking at an entry level machine, you're really not sure how much Leathercraft you may do, what kind of projects, you're just looking for something really basic. Great thing is they don't take up much room, they can go in a case, they could go back in the closet, um, you could put them on a table if you need to, like a domestic, even a domestic sewing machine table. And so, and plus there's lots of different options for these, like binders and, and things from Sailrite or uh, even from Tufso or other possible vendors that are out there I'm not really sure of. So, you know, it's always touchy talking about sewing machines in the leather craft community because I feel like that um, the focus tends to be on, uh, the, it's kind of like almost like big rig trucks. Or uh, the most, you know, how to get the most or uh, buy the most. But, and this is on the lower end of the scale. This is definitely the $500 and below market. And I think that um, these are great options, especially if you're just starting out and you're looking for something that can get the job done reasonably well for a reasonable price. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.